Okay, y'all. I just got done watching the movie Dune Part 2, which is great. It's a great movie. Highly recommend it. It uh, met the expectations. Everyone was saying that, talking about how good it was, and it met the expectations uh, that everyone had. And maybe I'll do a review uh, sometime soon. But right now, I want to talk about what it really makes me made me reflect on, and that's the uh, the issue of looking for mod mod dib. Uh, in the in the movie, Maud Dib is the the savior name that Paul Atreides uh, assumes for himself. There's a couple other names too, Usul, uh, and uh, I can't remember the, they, they they had some they had some name for the the, the Messiah who's supposedly going, going to going to come and save them. Um, if you've read the book Dune. You know that the whole issue of Paul Atreides as Mod Dib, as the, uh, uh, the Kwisak Haderach, if I'm saying that right, meaning the shortening of the way, uh, the the um, the notion of Paul becoming the savior figure to the Fremen people is complicated because it's. It's it, in a way, it's contrived. In a way, it's something that was put on. That, that was that was uh, uh, the uh, the scheming uh, the scheming females, the scheming female order known as the Bene Gesserit, who are always looking to to. Uh, uh, supposedly engineer or architect things to their advantage they they sort of set things in motion with their their mind control and their propaganda and you know uh, with the notion that that Paul might be this kind of uh, might play this kind of role so in a way uh, Paul Atreides ends up getting used by the, uh, the Bene Gesserit to become this messiah figure who who then, you know, after he transforms into the messiah, uh, becomes a significantly more complicated character, uh, significant, you know, more complicated hero. If, you know, I, I still think it's fair to call him a hero, but, but he's definitely a hero who has a dark dark side. Now, uh, one thing I will say about the movie is uh, you wouldn't think, I wouldn't have thought, I mean, I, I liked Timothy Chalamet in the first movie, Dune Part 1. I liked his his boyishness, and, uh, you know, I just generally enjoyed his performance. I uh, thought he was quite likable. Um, you know, in this movie, he transforms into a great a badass, you know. And you don't think of Timothy Chalamet when you think of T Timothy Chalamet. You don't think badass. Uh, you kind of you think pretty boy uh, and whatever. But he he pulls it off. Uh, it's a great performance. It's it's um, part of what makes the movie so good. What I want to just or what I what I'm the first thing that it makes me reflect on is where is our mod dib you know should we look for a mod dib I know it's very easy to say we shouldn't look for a savior we should uh, and, and, and to like that, that, that's the sort of cynicism of our day was that you know is that uh, savior figure and it's kind of and it's shared by the book and the movie really in some ways although I think we we can also enjoy uh, Paul's uh, transformation. I certainly did. We we also can see it as uh, problematic. I hate that word, but I can't think of a better word to use. Just because <coughs> uh, it's uh, it's an artificial construct, uh, and uh, so 
he's not really so much a messiah as he is a, a, a some somebody who's been genetically engineered in various ways uh, to to become this kind of figure. But there's all sorts of complicated stuff involving the spice, <laughs> you know, and the sandworms and stuff. Dune lore is very complicated, as I've said, as I've talked about before in a previous uh, video. But, you know, uh, I think there's a genuine need for a savior figure. And it's, it's like, it's not, it's not just from weak minded people, you know, it's sort of, that's, that's the whole cynical take on it or the whole, like, you know, I, I don't know, too cool for school sort of take on people who, who, uh, who ache for the savior to come. Uh, you know, they say just things like, oh, well, you know, the savior, like, like it's, like it's said by a couple of characters in the mo more cynical characters in the movie, uh, you know, oh, a savior is just, uh, just something that they, they just tell you to expect a savior in order to keep you, to keep you down and then you should be your own savior and do your own, not wait for a savior, but, you know, do your own thing, take your own action. Well, yeah, I think you should be proactive. No doubt about that. Um, but I do think we have a genuine need for a savior figure. It, it, it stirs something up in you if you let yourself feel it. And, and maybe some people don't, won't, don't want to let themselves feel it the same way people don't want to, a lot of people don't want to let themselves feel what it's like to be in love these days, you know, especially, you know, MGTOW guys and uh, cynical men, red pilled men. Um, and probably also on the on the women's side, this is a, this is an age of disenchantment with romantic love. But romantic love is a very real thing, and uh, it's it's something that that uh, it's I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's for everybody, but it's not something that should just be dismissed either. Um, it's very very real. I can say that you know having. Uh, you know, it, it, it's been a week since my mother's death and, and my, my parents loved each other very much. They, they got married in 1965 and they were together, uh, you know, for, for the duration, for, you know, they were together until my, my, until one of them died first, which was my mother. Um, for them, it was very, very real. That's not to say they never had problems or that they didn't have issues. Uh, but I think that just like the, just like romantic love is something that shouldn't just be sniffed at or, or, or waved away. You know, that's the thing. It's, it's like, there's a, there's the politically incorrect people, you know, like the MGTOWs and the red pill guys who, who dismiss romantic love. <clears throat> but then it's also politically correct. It's it's also woke to be like like to, oh we don't girl you can do it on your own you know <laughs> like like oh it's good that we have a, a movie now where the the heroine there's there's no love interest for her anymore you know like that that actress was was saying about the new Snow White she doesn't need a prince to save her um, you know it's like it's it's. You think you're being anti woke when you take a stand against romantic love, but but then you realize that uh, the the woke people hate romantic love too. Uh, so same kind of with this whole savior thing, you know. Uh, and the movie and the book, you know, makes us feel uh, the. Uh, what should I call it? Just this, uh, the rapturous feeling, you know, literally rapturous, I guess, you know, that's, that's what brings the rapture <laughs> given, given that the, you know, how the rapture supposedly comes about. But I mean, it, you, when you think of a savior coming, um, you know, for unto us, a, a, a child is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor. Uh, the ever loving God, uh, the Prince of Peace, all that stuff. 
Um, the whole notion of a savior, the whole notion of uh, a messiah, even if it's a false messiah, even if it's a uh, you know a messiah who's been uh, artificially constructed in some ways through genetic engineering and uh, propaganda and so forth, there's it still fills some need in us. Just like it filled that need in the Fremen, uh, in the movie. Uh, and it made, it's what makes the story of Dune so much more powerful, is the fact that Paul Atreides does become Maud Dib. He does become uh, this Messiah figure uh, who leads his people, his adopted people. Uh, out of out of their uh, imprisonment, out of their captivity, uh, and uh, vanquishes their enemies and his his own enemies. The, vanquishes the people who murdered his father and and so many of his friends and, and family. Uh, so that's something that I think needs to be considered. There needs to be more thought and attention given to that, to that perspective. It's way too easy to just be uh, cynical and, and like, like, like just think you're too, again, too cool for school and just say, uh, just bad mouth Messiah, the whole idea of a, of a Messiah and bad mouth people who are, who are, uh, wanting a Messiah to come. I think if you're honest with yourself, you know that it's a part of us. A part of us wants, needs, desires, craves uh, someone like that, a savior figure. And luckily, we have one. But it's not Paul Atreides. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts below, and thanks for watching.